film, television, gaming and the arts. It's time for another edition of Matt Horn Meets. On the line, we have Piers Stubbs talking to us about his involvement in the new Metal Gear Solid game, The Phantom Pain. So to start off with the first question, what was production of the game like for you? It was a really great experience. Um, when I got the call that um, I was going to be playing Eli in it, it was a shock because when I first auditioned, about four months went by um, until I heard anything. I thought, you know, I thought the project was dead and nothing was going on with it. And then all of a sudden I got the call to come in next week and start working on it. And that was about two years ago now because they take such a long time with these games because you have to do what they call um, face and body motion capture where they have to capture all the, they put all these blue dots all over your face so that they can capture the expressions um, and the movement of your body and then they can put that into the game. So you go in for a few weeks, then a few months later you go back in for another few days. and So it's, it's quite a long experience, but it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really great. It was a really great experience. Now I have to ask, Piers, um, did you know much about the franchise before you signed on? I knew that it was a pretty big deal because a lot of my friends are huge gamers. I'm quite a big gamer as well, but some of my friends are big, big gamers. And so I've known about it for quite a while. I haven't played it a lot, but I've played bits of it, but I know I know a lot about it. So when I was going up for it, I was very, very excited and um, definitely wanted to be a part of it. And yeah, and I haven't played this game yet because I'm going to play it at Christmas time because I really want to take time to get into it and um, really enjoy it. I've just got it sent in the post um, today. They just sent me a copy of it uh, to play. But yeah, I was definitely aware that this was a pretty big deal. Mm. And it was shrouded in secrecy. Um, I couldn't say anything about who I was playing. So it was, it was very, very difficult. And a lot of my friends are big Metal Gear sort of fans. And they were really excited. They knew about the Phantom Pain coming out. And this was about a year ago. And I couldn't say anything. So I kept it quiet for probably about 18 months. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a long process. Obviously, I can't... Well, I've, I've played it, so I know... And you know, obviously, because you're the character, who you actually are, which I can't say because then it will spoil anyone who hasn't played the game. But the twist is quite clever, I think. It's it's one of those ones where it had me fooled. Are you sort of, for want of a better word, astonished by the technology we have nowadays? I mean, it is it is like mocap now. It's It plays like a film kind of is a film in itself are you surprised about where technology is going in in terms of gaming oh absolutely i think it, i think it's incredible and when i was recording in the studios doing the game i got to see little slip bits of it and i got to see bits of it and it was incredible i mean it's and, it, and you're right it's like a film um i think it's really exciting how far they've got and where it's going you know technology i think it's going to be really incredible you think about where metal gear solid started the first one, and what they what they can do with it now. Uh, this one, the Phantom Pain. I mean, it's um, it is pretty incredible. But there's so much hard work that goes into making these games what they are, especially something like this where it's so big and there's so many different locations and and the, the look of it and everything. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really pleased to hear that you you like the twist in it. I've heard some really good things about the game. People have really liked it. People are saying it's one of the best ones, if not the best Metal Gear Solid yet. So. It's, uh, it's definitely good news to hear. To be honest, I interviewed um, David Hayter, who played the original Snake in the first game, but then due to contractual things, they, they brought in Kiefer Sutherland, and I was thinking this might be a bad idea. But to be honest, I, I'm, I was just completely blown away by what you can do in it. It's like ridiculous what you can do. I mean, it's like you, get, you have a horse, you have a dog, you have a helicopter you've got um you can build a base you can fault them things out you can it's ridiculous i mean i've only had it about a month or so and i think i'm like 45 percent complete with the whole thing <laughs> yeah it's um it's uh it's pretty incredible yeah there's so much thought that goes into what you can do with the game and i think this one more so than any of the ones any of the previous ones i think yeah you do have so many different options and ways that you can play the game and um and that's something I'm, I'm really excited about. When I'm going, because I'm going to play it uh, next week, I'm going to start playing it. It is really exciting. And you, when you're recording it, you have to do all these different ways of doing it because there's so many different, different options that you can take as a, when you're playing it. So you have to be able to make sure that you record every single different 
even if it's just a minor adjustment, just to make sure that it makes sense with what you've chosen to play in the game. So it's a long, it's a long process, but it's yeah, I agree with you. It's it's really exciting what they do with it. We mentioned early on that it plays out like a film, and there's been talks of a live action Metal Gear Solid film for years. I think it's like I think we're going close to a decade now. I know that's it's been going on for quite a while. I think they've I think they've just brought in a, a new writer. For it. And I think they're going ahead pretty quickly now. I think they are going to probably do it. I mean, you never know with these things. These big movies, because they take such a long time to develop and rise, and you know, it's, it's a long process. Um, but I think, especially because of the success of this game and the one before, I think that they're going to go ahead fairly soon. But I, I know as much as you, I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm guessing that they will. Who do you think would play Snake? I've no idea. I mean, there's so many people. I mean, there's loads of people that are coming into my mind right now but I'm thinking I don't know I, I don't know who, who will play him I think that's going to be a really interesting thing to see uh, who they cast I think you know when Kiefer Sutherland was brought in you know yeah people thinking oh is it going to be good and, and then you know he's, he's fantastic I think but it's a big thing to step into uh, and I have no idea who they're going to cast I have no idea but I'm definitely very excited and I'll be excited to see what story they tell with this film see what sort of path they go on with this film, uh, the sort of film that they want to create. Um, I think that's going to be really interesting. The question with mocap being so technologically advanced, do they just do you or do they do it as a group thing? It's one by one. You go into a um, recording studio, a one by one, and then, yeah, you go in for a few days uh, and you record all your dialogue and then record all your facial expressions and, and body movement, everything like that. And then, it, and then they, yeah, they bring the other actors. And then sometimes they'll do what you call playback, where you, where you sort of, you're in the studio and then they can play some of what's already been recorded with some of the other characters, like what Keith Sutherland's done or some of the other characters. And that's really helpful because then you sort of get that dialogue to play off, which is a lot easier. But um, usually it's just you recording your lines and then your body movement and facial expression with it. So let's talk a bit about you, Piers, a bit about you. What made you want to get into acting in the first place? It's funny, because I, I grew up in the country, in London, and then when I was about seven or eight, I moved to London, because I wanted to be a singer, and then I got into the uh, Sylvia Young Theatre School, I managed to get into there, and then you get signed with the agency, if you manage to get into the school, you get with the agency, and then I got into the Royal Shakespeare Company, and I did the Murray Wise of Windsor, and, and then I moved into, I, I did a lot of West End theatre, like Name Miz and things like that, and um, I kept getting these jobs because of my singing. And I kept getting these acting jobs with it. And then I suddenly, it was my first night on stage in, um, in Les Mis. And then I suddenly, I suddenly just thought, if I can do this for the rest of my life, I'll be, you know, really, really lucky. I don't know what it was about that particular show. I think Les Mis is such a powerful show. It was sort of, um, it was an incredible experience. I got to play Gavroche in it, and it was, it was really, really great. And then I, you know, I continued doing a lot of theatre, I did The Sound of Music and King and I and, and I worked with Patrick Stewart and Macbeth. And so I managed, I think, um, working with some really incredible people, you know, inspires me a lot to, to really want to do that. And, you know, I was really, really, I was always very, very keen to, I was always thinking, what's my next job? What's my next job? I might still have three months to go in, in the theatre on the show that I'm currently doing. And then, But I'd be thinking about the next one all the time. Yeah, I, I just suddenly, I think it was after I did Les Mis, it just suddenly, something clicks and I just thought, I've got to do this for the rest of my life if I can. And luckily enough, I've been able to keep going with it. I mean, it's funny that you mention Lemmy's and, and Patrick Stewart because they both have something in common, which is Hugh Jackman. Because Hugh Jackman was in the film of Le Les Mis and um, obviously Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman were in X-Men. And he was, he was um, um, tipped to play Snake at one point. And I'm thinking now, would that, would that be a good move? What, Hugh Jackman? Mm. Or... Hugh Jackman, yeah. I think, well, I think he could definitely do it. I think he'd be fantastic. I think he's pretty great in everything he does. Um, I don't think he can really put a foot wrong. But again, I have no idea he's going to do it, but I think he'd be fantastic, definitely. Going back to your acting career, what advice would you give to anyone wanting to get into the industry? Only do it if you really, really want to do it. <laughs> um, because it can be tough. I was lucky I started quite early. You know, I started at the age of eight. So I managed to sort of get in quick, pretty quickly into the business and then, um, you know, making the transition into a teenager and then going to a young adult. It's sort of, 
it, it it was okay and I was already working so I was sort of I was in the flow of it so it was easy it wasn't easy but I mean it was it was a lot easier than it might have been had I started later it's it's a tough business but you, if you really, if you can't imagine doing anything else and this is the only thing you can imagine doing then you know you have no choice you've got to do it but you've got to have that hunger you know and just go for it and have fun while you're doing it you know question sort of sub question to that is obviously you've got a bigger background in voiceover obviously Disney being part of that what advice would you give to anyone wanting to get into voiceover specifically yeah it was a funny thing I fell into it by accident I was working on a I was doing a lot of theatre and then I got yeah and then I got in with Disney for Little Einsteins and I started to work on that and I don't know I mean you've got to have a really good agent who who understands that business who's a who works specifically with voiceovers if you want to just do that, then you've got to get someone who's, who just does voiceovers, um, an agent who just represents voiceover clients. Then you'll then you know that's a good step. Yeah, and it's just uh, you, you sort of have to just work twice as hard as when you do on camera. You're not showing anything. You're just it's just what you hear in the voice. You have to make sure it conveys to who's listening. So it's you just have to just put twice as much effort into it. I've noticed that. So when I work on camera or when working on stage, you work twice as hard doing voiceover. Yeah, I suppose there's more expression within voice than there is sort of body language and stuff like that. You end up doing a lot of takes of the same line to make sure that every inflection and everything's just, just perfect, just so that it comes across just right. But once you get into it, you get you, you understand it and then it, it becomes second nature to you. Well, to go from one franchise to another franchise, um, which obviously is Marvel and the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., in the US, you've you've already had it aired, but I don't think it's come in the UK yet. It's it's sort of season three. It's the start of season three, I think, isn't it? Somewhere around there. Yeah, I think it's the second episode of season three. Mm. Um, I think it comes out in January in the UK. I'm mm. not sure. Yeah, it just aired in the US, so I think the UK is probably a couple of months behind showing it. So probably sometime in January. Mm. And you played uh, younger Lord. I play um young. I play a young Lord in it. Uh, there's a a plot. There's a storyline that, that that comes out in in the beginning of season three, and um, there's a storyline that involves these lords. I can't really give too much away um, because I, I don't want to spoil it. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was really exciting to to work with, with Marvel. Cause I'm, you know, I'm a big Marvel fan, and I was a big fan of the show Age of Shield um, before I was I was watching it. I watched the first two seasons, you know, for about a year before, um, and I you know I loved it. So getting that call that I was going to do that, that was, that was, um, that was pretty amazing. Uh, and the sets, I mean, when you go on stage, when you, they do it on a big, huge stage, and the sets that they create for this, it's, it's incredible. It's like nothing else. Obviously, you play a younger version in Metal Gear of somebody who is important in Metal Gear. Obviously, you play a younger Lord in, in the Marvel franchise. Are there any characters you, you'd like to play who are, who are younger versions of well-known characters? Oh god! Um, oh god! I mean, yeah, there's there's quite a few actually. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know obviously the, the big thing that everyone, the thing that's going on at the moment is um, Star Wars. You know, they're doing so many different, they're doing you know film every nine or ten months at the moment. You know, and they're doing a lot of stories of the younger versions of the main characters. You know, that's obviously something that would be really incredible. Yeah, I mean, there's 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 quite a few. That's probably the biggest one. Yeah, you know, I think I think for everyone, I think Star Wars is. You know, quite amazing. As uh, if I was, you know, to be able to do something like that would be pretty cool. Since you mentioned it, what what are your thoughts on the um, one coming out? I think it's seven days now. Must be seven yeah, days. yeah. It's a week to that it comes yeah. out. Very excited. Yeah. Um, I I was skeptical at first, but I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be really good. Only problem is there's so much expectation now. I mean, they're you know expecting it to break you know two billion dollars, and it's a lot of expectation, and that's always a tricky thing with a movie. It's going to obviously do really, really well, um, just how well it does. I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be closer to the original three. I think they're trying to make it in the style of, of that more, um, which I think will be good. I mean, I, I, I was okay with the you know, the prequels, but I think obviously the original trilogy was fantastic. So I think if they've kept it closer to that, then I think that they're probably heading for success with this. Well, I'm going to give you a one-minute plug to plug what's coming up for you in the future. And, of course, you, you mentioned before the interview that you want to talk about underdogs. Yes, um, underdogs. I just This is something I just finished working on. It's a new animated film that's coming out. I think it's coming out sometime in the new year. Um, it's got Ariana Grande and Nicholas Holt and Casey Holmes and Bella Thorne. And it's, it's got some, a fantastic cast. 
and I'm playing the sort of the bad guy, the, the villain, and I'm playing the young version of Nicholas Holt, the teenage version of Nicholas Holt's character in the film. And that's going to be really great. It's about um, football, and that's a that's a big theme of the film. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see it. I know a lot of I know a lot of kids that are that are really excited to see it as well. So that's going to be good. And then I'm doing a film early next year, which I can't say anything about yet because it hasn't been announced. So I'm going to start working on that uh, in the next couple of months. So yeah, it's been really busy. So I'm just looking to wind down at Christmas and then get going again in January. But yeah, it's, it's really exciting at the moment. So it's, it's a really exciting time. Well, Piers, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Oh, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Obviously, we'll have to get you back when it gets bigger and better. Yes, I'd, I very much like that. Yeah, maybe we can talk after I've filmed this film next year and we can um, talk about that. Um, that would be great. I'd love to have another interview with you. It's not Metal Gear, is it? <laughs> you can't say <laughs> No, it's not. Metal. You can't say No, <laughs> I mean, I would, be able to, I would be able to say if it was probably, but no, it's not. It's not that. <laughs> well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you so much, Matt. Bye-bye now.